What is up YouTube, it's Kingfisher745 and in this video we're going to take a look at the Spec Op 33 Deathlock set. It certainly seemed like a pretty cool set and we'll try to get a feel with whether or not it's usable in today's meta and just if it's powerful or mediocre. So let's check it out. Now first up is going to be the research item, the Quick Draw Plasma Pistol. It's Deathlock set piece 104. It is a quick action and it grants automated regeneration. That is with any other piece of the set. It's going to apply a heal to the agent on use. This would be really incredible if it wasn't for all the despair out there. Because it's a quick action, why not use it every single round? And the heal's pretty nice. Besides that though, it also grants cybernetic aegis, increased evasion and defense. All in all, it's a pretty decent weapon, especially for being a quick action. I like any time you can apply direct damage with a quick action attack. This set also works really well together and combos off of each other. You'll see what I mean once we get to the other pieces of the set. As for the Deathlock set piece 204, it's the Focused Plasma Launcher. This is an AoE attack. It first has surging nano machines. With any other piece of the set, it increases the effect of all healing received by the agent's team. It also has a chance to activate after the quick draw plasma pistol. And it's going to apply dizzy, exposed, and weakened to all enemies. Okay, so first things first. The increasing heal actually makes a big difference. I've seen absorb energy go up to nearly 5k. I mean, can you imagine that? Then with someone like Damon Hellstrom, just think of that healing boost. The problem once again is despair. It also sets up Paragon Exploiter though, and when it says it has a chance to activate after the quick draw plasma pistol, they mean if you fire the pistol, it can automatically fire. So pretty awesome. As for the third piece in the set, it's the Deathlock Cannon, and it has one with the machines. With any other piece of the set, the agent gains cybernetic and immunity to winded. So there you have it, your tech attacks won't be locked out. And you can still always get follow up attacks. That eliminates two of the biggest concerns. This weapon also has a chance to activate after the focus plasma launcher. And it grants tech upgrade. So your tech attacks will do extra damage. What you're going to find with this set is you won't have any problem dealing direct damage. It's a fairly explosive high damage set, especially this final piece. The Deathlock set piece 404 is the Deathlock Fist. This weapon is a tech melee energy attack with deadly crits, ignore defense, and Deathlock potential. This says with any other set piece it gains exploit shields and paragon exploiter. It also has a chance to activate again, following its own use, as well as following the use of the Deathlock Cannon. Now let me tell you, if this follows the Deathlock Cannon, it's going to knock something out. If it double attacks, they have no chance of surviving. It does that much damage, but hopefully we can see one of the attacks. So far I've gotten a 44k crit, but I don't even think that's going to be max. I'm pretty sure I got a 24k hit with almost no setup on it. So I know this thing packs a punch. Now in our final slot we basically just want something that stops debuffs for that first round. So we're going to use the Lantern of Doom. That's really important because of anger who's going to possess your entire team otherwise. So you don't want that happening at the beginning. We're also going to show something that the Breaker of Souls does 100% of the time for the AI. And I don't know if it's supposed to happen like this or not, but it's so cheesy. Since my agent gets to begin, we'll start with the Quick Draw Plasma Pistol. And by the way, the other cool thing about having these range attacks is you don't have to worry about Absorb Energy or the Elite E-ISO. I'm also happy that in our very first match, we got a pretty solid enemy team. So you can't say this isn't a test. Now on Angerer's turn, what the AI is going to do basically every time is they're going to begin with his summon, Succubus Act of Darkness. And this applies Purged and Demise. 
Now Purge does say deals damage when removed by status removal effects. But what's happening is, if the enemy team prevents debuffs, as soon as you use another action, they're basically purged for pretty big damage. Like I said, the AI is programmed to do this over and over again every single first turn. So I guess it's supposed to happen? I really don't know, but it's a cheap thing built into Angrer, who of course didn't need anything else like that. But hey, I guess he's supposed to be OP. As for Null, we're going to use Short Fuse, and we have Despair built into You're Not Worthy. Trust me, I think it's worth it. And then I usually just start with Meteor Swarm. Notice that Despair also goes through Mystic Shroud. So does Meteor Swarm. So we really don't care about that. Sure, it may slow us down a little bit, but not our main premise, which is Meteor Swarm. Rest in peace, Magic Warding. Now watch, of course, on the enemy Angerer's turn. They're going to use their other summon attack because he's obsessed with using two on his first turn. And we immediately are purged. So there you have it. A massive chunk of health from our entire team, that's rough. But at least now on my agent's turn, we can go ahead and dot them up, since Mystic Shroud has now expired. More importantly though, we're going to try to use the Focus Plasma Launcher and set up our Deathlock Fist. So this is going to hit everyone except for Angrer. And most importantly, it sets up the enemy agent and Null. Plus we're going to get a Deathlock Cannon activation. Since it activates after an AoE, it fires on the entire enemy team. Pretty awesome. After that, unfortunately for us, the agent dies to dots. See, I wanted to hit him with the Deathlock Fist. Still though, we're now going to go ahead and try to possess the enemy team. And we cause Null to punch Angrer. Then I figured, let's go ahead and use our purge ability once again. At this point, Null is going to die to dots, and that's pretty much our only other character with those Paragon Exploiter debuffs. So it kind of ruins our Deathlock Fist, at least for this fight. Besides that, we'll just finish it with a Fatal Fist, and we'll hope to use that big attack next match. Alright, while we do this second and final match, we've already seen kind of what the set can do. So I'll go ahead and give you my impressions of it throughout the fight. Our opponents this time, how about a 34k Colossus and Victor Mancha team up? So an interesting team to say the least. We're going to begin with Smothering Shadow actually, then we're going to use the Deathlock Cannon on Colossus. I figured let's go ahead and fire this weapon officially and then we'll get the final one in a little bit later in this fight. It could actually cause a pretty nasty follow up and I'd love to see that. What we do see is 4200 HP gained from Absorb Energy. So there you see that healing boost in action. Next, the enemy agent's going to try to exhaust us, but we do prevent debuffs for this first round. Well, after he uses the Blackest Void, we won't. But at least we're still going to be able to use our quick actions and normal actions for now. That means with Null, we go ahead and place the spare on the entire enemy team, then we're going to begin with Meteor Swarm. He'll immediately step up and protect, which we kind of don't like. We'd rather our agent take the hit. But then on Victor Mancha's turn, he's going to use Magnet Man. And unfortunately, we'll have to sit through the Chain Lightning and Static Charge. Now as for this set, just some general impressions. With the right team up, you can just about use anything. However, the set definitely has its merits. First of all, it does do very nice damage. The Fist is a knockout attack. Secondly, you have a bunch of ranged options, so you can bypass the Elite E-ISO. The healing boost would be very nice if there wasn't so much to spare. And finally, although it's kind of random and that's the part I don't like too much, when other pieces activate after each other, you're talking some damage burst and it could really spell trouble for the enemy team. The other good parts about this set is you can build around a lot of different teams. First of all, I like a Paragon Exploiter team with them. So just think about that. You have a Knockout Fist attack, you can play some Paragon Exploiter debuffs with an AoE ranged attack, and then you can have teammates that take advantage and help you out with that. Also, since it's a tech set, you could really try to build a tech type team up or possibly something around energy attacks. 
So think Iron Man, for example. You could maybe even throw on the rectifier and just build a full energy team. I guess the bottom line is it's a very solid set, definitely worth picking up. In the current meta though, it's a little bit more risky than a dot type setup. So for right now, I do prefer dots, damage over time effects, indirect damage. Direct damage I feel is somewhat risky, otherwise this thing would get two thumbs up. Still though, like I said, definitely worth getting, and I wish you all luck in finishing the set. As for any future videos, we'll try to take a look at other combinations, and possibly just using two pieces of the set. So definitely check back for that. That's going to be it for this one though, so thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Then until next time, good luck, and take care.